Hello, we're in week four of our Fit for Life course, and these are the notes for our small group discussions. Can I say that if you can begin your small group with J. John's wonderful YouTube video story about donuts, then I warmly recommend that. And those of you who've seen it before, don't give away the punchline, please. We're looking at 2 Corinthians chapter 9. And the context of this chapter is that Paul is collecting a financial gift from churches around the Mediterranean to send to the poor Christians who are living in Jerusalem. I want to suggest to you there are three key points that he's sharing with us about money and our attitude to it. The first point is that it's God's to start with. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 10. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. Everything comes from God and it's of God's own that we give him. That's the first point. The second is that God is a generous giver and that means we are to be generous in turn. Verse six, remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Thirdly, along with saying that money is God's to start with and that God is a generous giver and so should we. Thirdly, money has real power over us. It can sit on the throne of our lives and it can be on the throne of our lives, whether we have a lot of money or whether we have just a little. And we have to remove it from that throne and nothing dethrones the power of money like giving it away. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 11, Paul longs for his readers to be rich in every way. Now, if you read the rest of Paul and the rest of New Te the New Testament, it's crystal clear that when he says being rich in every way, it's not mainly about wealth. And indeed, being wealthy is likely to stop us being truly rich. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9, where Paul says of Jesus, though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you, through his poverty, might become rich. I want to finish with three questions. Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 11, you will be made rich in every way. What do you think he meant by that? What do you think he meant? And bear in mind that Paul himself knew times of great hardship in his life. Second question, when Paul says in 2 Corinthians 9 verse 15, thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. What is the gift to which he's return, referring? And you can have more than one answer to this. Third question, Paul says in 2 Corinthians 9 verse 7, God loves a cheerful giver. Now, do you think we give because we are cheerful or are we cheerful because we give?